our next speaker, uh, uh, whose name is Wade Johnson. Uh, Wade might win the award for most tenacious explorer. I think we heard Tim Goy to describe you had to have passion. It was a seven day a week, 24 hour, 24 hours per day job. Um, Wade uh, has been tracking the Burns Prospect, which is, I believe, about 60 kilometers from Kalgoorlie. Um, lots of companies, Western Mining and others, have picked over this ground. Wade himself was looking at it and exploring there with Newmont when he ran Newmont's Australian operation some 13 years ago. Um, and then bringing you up to date in February this year, Wade popped a couple of holes in, uh, having successfully staked it a couple of years ago and has made the discovery. So we're now at day 90, day 100. Um, Wade, over to you. Where to from here? Thanks, Katie, and uh, hello, participants. Um, yeah, I thought uh, the cover slide kind of basically straight into it. And I think going back to what Tim said about passion, I think this is me sitting out the Drury um, and basically sets the scene. This is uh, where Burns is. This is, was early in the year. Um, sets the scene, Lake Randall in the background, Spinifex, the red ground soil, uh, and where Burns is when we were drilling early in the year. So really sets the scene and, and really to say, and, and what Tim said also that, um, yeah, the passion about the geology and, and the area um, and getting out the bush and uh, skin in the game and doing the exploration on the project. So, um, yeah, we've got a small team, small team of dedicated exploration geologists and uh, we've had uh, recent success, great success at, uh, at Burns. We're still drilling out there at the moment. So this is what um, I guess I'll, I'll talk about this Burns, interesting Burns discovery we've made near Kalgoorlie. First slide based disclaimer, the, uh, the presentations on the website you choose to have a look at it. So I won't go through any much of that. I guess just a, a brief background on Lafroy. Lafroy was formed back in 2016 um, to explore a large area of ground we, we, we put together uh, about 50 kilometers from Kalgoorlie. There was a period of time where a lot of companies were dropping ground. So we um, were, were lucky enough and fortunate enough. We liked the area. We like the prospectivity of the area. We like the big regional scale faults uh, and gradually picked up the ground um, and then commenced exploration back in 2016. Um, we have two big areas or sub projects within Lafroy, and that's Eastern Lafroy, where Lafroy as itself does its exploration, where we've had the recent success with Burns, this copper gold discovery. Uh, and then more recently in the past, uh, a lucky strike gold deposit, which is also a virgin gold discovery uh, we made on the ground. On the other part of the ground, we call it Western Lafroy. Um, it's a big package of land and predominantly over a, a large salt lake, and that's underpinned and the exploration is done there by gold fields. It's a, a, it's a large joint venture we've got with gold fields, and that started in 2018, and I'll show where that is. But uh, they've been doing a lot of foundation air core drilling and more recently on uh, diamond drilling on selected targets out on Lake Lafroy. As far as the company goes, um, it's a small, uh, we're a small team, um, board of directors, four, four directors, including myself, uh, the major shareholders, uh, Goldfields, and basically they put the board together. So the board's got a lot of skin in the game in the company. Uh, you know, 21% of the company is held by the board and issued capital about 120 million shares. So that's the company in a nutshell. And uh, I guess our flagship project is Lafroy, and that's where we're doing our exploration and where we've made the discovery, um, this copper gold discovery out at Burns. So put in the picture, this is um, the big Lafroy project, about 638 square kilometres of land, wholly owned. We, uh, it's all our ground, 100%, no encumbrances. There's two packages, the one in the red is Eastern Lafroy, where we're doing our exploration as Lafroy, and then the outline in green is East, uh, Western Lafroy, where uh, Goldfields are doing exploration out of that last Lake Lafroy. On the bottom right hand of the screen on that figure is the giant St. Ives gold mine, produced plus 10, 10 million ounces of gold. Um, and it shows our situation, where we're situated relative to that. Uh, it shows where Burns is. Um, Burns, I guess, wasn't in our original package back in 2016. And that's the bottom bullet point there is we, we, we constantly monitor the ground. We monitor the ground position. Uh, as Simon said, I've been previously with Newmont. I knew the area, uh, monitored the Burns area and uh, the ground came up in late 2019 and we subsequently lodged an application and uh, we were lucky enough to win the ballot uh, and to win that tenement back in late 2019. Um, it's a fantastic package of land. 
the red ground, the red outlying red uh, straddles the Mount Munga Fault, a big regional scale fault, uh, where we've been doing actively doing exploration since 2016. So Burns is a recent um, acquisition or acquisition of pegging of tenement in the area. Uh, and that's where we started our exploration uh, early this year. But I guess I was fortunate to have a bit of a background, knew about it, knew about the system. Uh, and then we got underway with our drilling earlier this year. So I guess going on to Burns and what it is and what we, what we did. So we got the tenement granted pretty quickly um, back in late 2020, did a heavy survey straight away on the ground drilling in January this year. And in February made the announcement of this uh, discovery hole, 38 metres at 7.63 grams per tonne gold, plus 0.56% copper from 134 metres. It was the second hole of the program. Um, uh, and it was a, a planning of a hole for an area we hadn't been drilled, been drilled before. Uh, on that cross section there, the Elliott Bar holes are the holes that Lafroy have drilled. The old holes, it was some old holes that were drilled back between 2012 to 2015. Uh, they're the OBURC holes. Um, you can see the, the discovery hole and where it is. It's in a porphyry host rock. Um, it's copper gold mineralization. We also get silver, we also get molybdenum. It is a very interesting system we've discovered. We've subsequent to that, we've done, we are underway with diamond drilling. The dashed lines are the, the big diamond holes which we have underway. We have no results back for those at the moment, but we made releases about what we're seeing in the geology, um, consistent with the observations we see in Elliot Bar 260. And we've got an, uh, just started uh, that big deep hole, which is Elliot Bar 268. So that's now underway. Um, but what we've, we've learned from doing what we call this baseline section, really understanding the geology of this system. Um, it's unique. I think it's unique to the Eastern Goldfields. Uh, it's a copper gold system with the molly with the silver, but we get the mineralization both within the porphyry and also in the basalt. Um, but our full focus at the moment is following this, what we call the Eastern porphyry um, on the baseline section to test it at depth, which is underway now. And then uh, to use the baseline section geology to advance exploration to the North and South and, and build scale to the, to the porphyry. But uh, it's a very exciting system um, and we're learning it as we go. Um, I guess one thing, key thing it's got in it is a lot of magnetite alteration, um, something I haven't seen before, but uh, and it, you, we can use that to, to um, plan exploration to the north and south in our tenement package. So I guess the, that's the Burns discovery and, uh, and pleased to answer any questions. I like it like that, Waze. <laughs> nice tune. Okay, so um, thanks for that, Wade. We've got a question here. If you just want to stop sharing your screen, I've got a question from Chris Baker. So I've just allowed you to talk, Chris. Um, feel free to ask your question. Just need to unmute yourself. We can Thanks, hear you. Uh, uh, Danica and uh, Simon, let me just say, love the week, very becoming. Uh, and, and thank you for um, thank you for the presentation. Really interesting to see two such novel discoveries uh, juxtaposed against one another. Fascinating stuff. Jill and I, we've been living with for a year and seeing it getting bigger and bigger. Um, and I've got a lot of questions, but really the one the question that has to be asked of of, of, um, uh, of Wade is, you know, what have you got there? You know clearly a, a tiger by the tail, if you like, you know, what is this geology? You know, we've been around the gold field for too many bloody years these days, and I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, what have you learnt from these drill holes? You know, it, to me, it looks a bit like a porphyry copper in the Archean, you know, very, very unusual. And there are not many deposits of, of, of this ilk. Uh, what, what are you learning about it? And uh, what do you think it might be? And what do you think you can find elsewhere along the structure? Yeah, thanks, Chris. No, great question. Um, yeah, we're learning a lot, a lot about the system as we as we drill. And I guess the key thing is we, we're drilling. That's why we're drilling this baseline section. So rather than stretching ourselves and going out to the north and going down to the south, we, we, we're consistently drilling this baseline section. And I guess the key thing is we're, we're drilling this baseline section and drilling these big, deep diamond holes um, without any assay results. We see fabulous looking geology, alteration, mineralization, 
lots of copper sulfide. Um, it is an intriguing system. Um, geologically wise, and, and as I said before, we get mineralization in the porphyry and in the basalt. Uh, we're learning it, I guess, hole by hole, we're learning more and more about this system. Um, and even what we made the announcement this morning about uh, what we were seeing in the recent holes, the porphyry seems to be getting bigger at depth. Uh, the alteration is consistent. We're seeing this chocolate pyrite, magnetite, um, pyrites, magnetite, weird alteration minerals. Um, so, and I guess one of the key things is we, we know about the system. It's got a lot of magnetite in it. Um, and that magnetite helps us to target further in the district. Uh, we know, we believe that Burns is part of a much bigger intrusive complex in the area. Um, and I guess the other thing we've recently completed is, is a gravity survey, really detailed gravity survey of the area. Um, I, I guess for myself, it's you know, been in the gold fields for a very long time, drilled a lot of things, seen a lot of things. Um, it is unique. I think it is truly unique to the Eastern Goldfields. It is a really interesting system. Um, the mer mineralogy uh, is really, uh, I guess that's the, the real eye opener. It's very interesting in what we see down there, uh, particularly with um, seeing gypsum, um, native copper, lots of native copper we get in the Western basalt um, and minerals you wouldn't expect to see down, you know, 500 metres, 450 metres, but uh, um, and I guess I can say that we've, we've, we've got the Geological Survey of Western Australia and the uh, University of Western Australia involved as well to help with the research. And even last week when we had a, a group in town to have a bit of a, a geo fest, as I call it, to review the geology, um, all of us put together were all per perplexed of what this system could be. Um, no one has really put it together and really say what, what model it is. Um, so I think at the moment we'll... <laughs> We'll just call it the Burns model. It's a very intriguing system, uh, really interesting mineralogy and uh, mineralization. And uh, yeah, just keep, I think we've got to keep drilling these holes and uh, understand the system and, and particularly use the magnetics to, um, to guide us to further exploration in the area. Yeah. Wait, thank you.